In the summer of 2011, 94-year-old Ed Sable became the oldest member ever enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I wanted to show you my speech. What the hell happened to me? Hey, the commissioner. The commissioner. The commi oh, this is the big guy right here. I could only turn so far. This is the big guy. So I only saw half your face. It's good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And lastly, finally, remember forever as the man behind the idea of NFL films. It is my honor and pleasure to announce a football hall of fame. Congratulations on your night tonight. Hey, nice to see you, pal. Godfather, Godfather. Godfather. We gotta do it again for the cameras. I mean, man. I mean. By the way, uh, NFL Network has Steel, what I do now is because of what you tell me. So many of us owe you a real thing. Thank you. This was a moment 50 years in the making. And it was fitting that Sable's NFL career ended with a Hall of Fame jacket. Because that's exactly where his story starts. Five decades earlier, he wasn't only wearing jackets, he was selling them. When uh, I married my wife, Audrey, her father had a very successful overcoat manufacturing business. And so I started following him around the factory. He never really actually asked me to join the company, but my mother-in-law said, you just keep walking around with him. I kept walking around with him for 15 years. Every weekend, my grandfather used to come over and eat dinner with us, and he would be get my dad in the corner, and he'd be telling about this, and you got to do this. And, and you could just see my dad was so was so bored with it and he'd see me over in the corner and my grandfather would be like this and my dad would look at me and then he'd go you know he'd make these funny faces of course my grandfather he didn't even know it but to me that epitomized my dad's feelings towards selling overcoats he found it boring it was unfulfilling and he was a showman at heart and his hobby was movies home movies at the time but you could see that that's what he really wanted to do I started with a gift, a wedding gift, uh, of a little 16 millimeter camera about that big. And I started taking pictures with it, and I just got enamored with it. I thought it was a fabulous thing. Coming out of the house, going down the steps, getting in the car, getting out of the car, going up the steps, getting in the house. I must have shot that every day for, I don't know. And then everything Steve did, I shot it. I don't remember my father having a head in those days. It was just this, this, these arms and this metal camera on top of his shoulders. My first pony ride, my first haircut, uh, my first football game, my dad filmed me. Steve was playing at Haverford School, and I would go down there and shoot the practices, and then I'd go up in a building and shoot the games and give the film to the coach, and the coach, he never had that done before and loved it. So uh, I kept shooting. My grandfather got to the point where he was going to retire. And by this time, he'd figured out that he was not going to turn the business over to my father. So what he did was sell the business. My father took that money and he bought a Mercedes. He bought two horses. He bought a new home. And he did exactly what my grandfather was concerned about, that he was squandering all the money. 
But at one point, my dad decided now he wanted to create a business. And what better business did he know than making movies? So he decided to make his hobby his profession. Sable named his new film company after his daughter, Blair. Finding an exciting subject matter was not as easy. I uh, went to New York and went to the uh, Bahamas Tourist Board. And I presented them with an idea to make a film touring the Bahamas in a little single-engine airplane. Nothing spectacular, but at least I got enough money to buy a couple more lenses. And then I had some friends at the uh, aquarium that opened in Philadelphia. And they were talking about trying to get a little whale in the aquarium. And I spoke to them about, hey, how about if I go up to Nova Scotia and try to catch a little whale up there and then bring it down to you. And they said, great idea. I didn't even catch a herring. I couldn't catch anything. That was the end of my whaling trip. Moby Dick, that's what I should have called it. Chasing white whales suited Sable. And he was about to reel in the biggest catch of his life on a subject he had already been filming for 15 years. Being the thinker that he was and the visionary, it was easy for him to make the leap from the little boys team to the National Football League. I thought, well, there's the top, boy. If you could shoot football for the National Football League, that would be something. I had found out through a little research that the previous year, Telra got the bid for $2,500. So I said, look, I don't want to mess around. I want this badly. I'm going to double that. I'm going to put in a bid for $5,000. Put the check in the envelope, went up to the meeting, gave it to the commissioner. He said, I have a bid here from Blair Motion Pictures for $5,000, but I'm going to withhold awarding the bid until tomorrow at the end of business. And when I later asked Pete why he did that, he says, Ed, I never heard of you. I didn't know whether you could even make a film, so I had to do some checking to see if you had a camera. One day and a three martini lunch later, Ed Sable was awarded the film rights for his first NFL production. I think this game was about minus 10 with the chill factor. That's the wind blowing. You know, that was just a severe afternoon to shoot movies. Well, thank God I didn't know more. I didn't realize that the film could freeze. I didn't realize that a cameraman, if he put his face against the camera, it would stick to the camera. So I didn't know about that. I just said, let's go. Shoot. That's all. Shoot everything that moves. The bench knows that the right play could ice the game. No pun intended. Here's the right play. Paydirt is just 30 yards away. Jerry Kramer kicks. And the ball finds it. Sable won the rights to the 1963 championship for $10,000. In 1964, the price was 20000 The cost of business was rising too quickly for Blair Motion Pictures. So I went to Pete Roselle and I said, Pete, I think the National Football League has to start their own film company. And I said, I even have the name NFL Films. They said, fine. Since that day, NFL Films has proven Emmy-worthy and Ed Sable Hall of Fame-worthy. One of the writers says that in the final ballot room that the writers are told can you write the history of the nfl without mentioning blank and that's before you vote for someone well i know one thing for sure you can't see the history of the nfl without ed sable the music the interesting camera angles make it more compelling for me than, than watching an actual game. Ed Sable is one of the true giants in the sports industry. Without him, you wouldn't have these iconic heroes. And Pazarchik fumbles the football. It's picked up by Herman Edwards. I don't believe it. The legacy that Ed leaves behind is an absolutely vast one. Every time someone sees a close-up shot of a football spiraling through the air, that's an Ed Sable shot. He gave us that. 
that Sable was proud of the work he did. He was proud of his association with the NFL. And he made the NFL uh, a better league. That's a great legacy. Montana rolling on the right, looking toward the end zone, throwing under pressure, throws his pass, caught by Clark. It was just a big, fun thing, and it happened to turn out pretty good.